Good evening. Good evening. Wow, it's not bad. Well, thanks for coming. That was, they'll conclude the concert this evening and no. Well, th can everybody hear us fine? Is it not too loud? Perfect? Okay, good. We're getting thumbs up. So first of all, I want to thank all of you for coming, especially on a, on a Friday night. Uh, Jeopardy is on soon and I'm sure <laughs> celebrity guests. And so the fact that you came to see us instead is, is wonderful. But um, my name is Ara Tapuzian, and uh, I'm joined with two very good friends of mine. George Nagoshin, who is uh, playing guitar, plays a lot of different instruments, actually. Plays the oud, plays clarinet, plays drum. He's been playing for 85 years. Yeah. Yeah. We're pretty much the same age, so I can, I can say that. And then, then there's Jerry. No, I won't make fun of him. I made fun of George, so I won't make fun of you this time. So. Jerry Gurjikian, he's a drummer, percussionist, as you well heard, and uh, Jerry's been playing for a lot of years in a lot of different, a lot of different bands. So I'm very fortunate to be able to play with this group this evening. Uh, tonight we're going to do, this is a little interactive, so you can't just kind of sit and listen the whole time. We're gonna, we're gonna talk, I'm gonna share some stories and reflections and that type of thing while, while we play music too. 
Uh, we have an, uh, I have an incentive, which we'll talk about a little later. So like, if you do something for me, I've got like a little gift for you. So um, very, very cheap promotional move, but I'm gonna take it anyway. So it's, <laughs> before we get started, it's really special to be here uh, for, for a couple reasons. And I told this story, so the last time I played here was five years ago. And a um, lot of fun, great, uh, great enjoyment we had in doing that. But this is the library that I grew up with. Uh, it looked certainly starkly different when I was a kid, but I have to tell just a real quick story uh, why I love this place so much. So, uh, and, and I could tell by uh, this nice seasoned audience, you all remember eight millimeter movies, right? So if you, who's been a resident here for 30, 40 years? Just raise your, just show of hands. Okay. So do you remember when you could rent uh, or check out, I should say, eight millimeter movies here? Well, we used to be able to do that. And so that was like a moment that I can remember with my dad. My dad and I would come here, uh, we'd go through these three by five index card files, and it was, you know, Charlie Chaplin, it was Laurel and Hardy, it was Abbott and Costello, it was, you know, the, even the old, all of the silent movies, and we used to check them out. It was just such a great experience. So it's a memory that I, remember and I, I share it just because this library is very special and, and it's done such a wonderful job. How about a nice hand for all the folks that do the work here that... Yeah. So like I said, tonight we're going to play some Armenian, we're going to play some Middle Eastern music for you. We'll talk, we'll chat, and then like I said, toward the end I've got a little bit of a of kind of a surprise and incentive for you. And then certainly we're open to questions. Only easy ones, if they're, if they're hard, I will pass through you and go, no, I'll, I'll answer. No, nope, you can't ask it yet. You gotta ask them later, not yet, not yet. But we'll, we'll for sure get to it. So again, thank you for, yeah, there's rules to the question part. So again, thank you for coming. <laughs> Thanks.
Thank you very much. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, the instrumentation that's up here and, and the type of music that we're playing and give you kind of a little bit of a, a background story of, of where some of this music is kind of coming from. So first let's talk about the, the instruments here. So this is a guitar, so that's pretty easy, right? But <laughs> in Armenian music, there really wasn't a guitar until uh, rock and roll started getting famous. So really Elvis kind of brought the rhythm guitar to Armenian dance music. Because Armenian dance music would be a clarinet, a uh, percussion, uh, an oud player, uh, maybe a kanun player, maybe a violin player, but there was no, there was really no drive to it. So there was uh, sort of the big band era of Armenian music, but it was all done with drums, like multiple drums on, on stage when they were playing. So the fact that guitar has been added about 50 years ago is a, is a big change in, in a lot of our music and, and pretty much a standard for, for what we do. Jerry is playing, it's kind of a unique setup, and Jerry has always played this setup, right? It's always been like a two no. for the most part? No? No? Okay, so at the beginning he played one drum. You're just supposed to agree. Okay. Yeah, you go, you're right. <laughs> Blow the whole thing now. Um, so, but Jerry's playing a, a, what is called a dumbbag, and uh, there's different names to it. There's Darbuka, uh, what else? There's uh, Dumbleg, there's a lot of different, different names to it. And so uh, Jerry's playing two different types of drums. Obviously the bigger one has got more of a bottom bass to it. There's a tambourine that's inside there, so when he hits it, you can hear actually a, a, a jingle and a rattle, and so that's, that's the tambourine. And then the other one he plays, which is more what you would see in a, a lot of Arabic music, uh, more of a darbuka. Th that uh, instrument itself, that dumbbag, was uh, ceramic porcelain. Um, as a matter of fact, Jerry used to have a, a, a different setup. He, this is kind of a modernized setup for what he's got. But he had a clay drum uh, that he would play, which sounded really nice. The problem with playing a, uh, playing a clay drum a, it's tough to keep it in tune, uh, and then if you break the skin, you're kind of out of luck. So with this, uh, it's, a, it's a tunable head. He can take it off and he can put uh, a new different skin on it. So Jerry, uh, is really, for the long, longest time, we've really been playing two drums. Uh, and it's a, it's a, don't you think it's a nice sound? What? Yeah, it's a wonderful sound. And then the instrument that I play uh, is, is called a kanun. It is uh, an ancient harp. It goes all the way back to the fifth century. Um, it, it's got Middle Eastern roots, it's got North African roots, it's got Armenian roots, it's got Greek roots, it's got Arabic roots. And so all Turkish roots, they all play it uh, to, this, to this day. So it's, it's a, uh, an instrument that has anywhere between 73, 76, 78, it, it kind of depends. Uh, this is a, a Turkish kanun, which is predominantly what we play this because of the, the way it's made, the style and so forth. There are Arabic kanuns that are much larger and a bit heavier, beautiful sound to it. Uh, the box of it is, is a lot bigger, but in I'll show this a little bit later when I'm not playing and I can kind of lift it around and, and kind of, well, I could probably do this a little bit without making a mess. But if you can kind of see that a little bit better. Now, if I drop it, the whole concert's done. <laughs> so I hope you liked all those songs. So it could be it if I lose my grip here. So you'll see that there are a bunch of strings that uh, rest on this bridge here. And then... Um, also, there's levers underneath, and then certainly it wind, winds around kind of these, these pegs. The, the levers are really important for our, our music because our music is not just Western classical uh, chromatic music. I mean, this is the grandfather of the piano. Make no mistake about that. So when you think about these levers and the multitude of levers that go across the strings, Think about the inside of the piano or the black keys on the piano, right? The ability to be able to kind of move that around is, is what this instrument does. So, for, an ex for example, if this is A and I want A flat, 
And if I want E sharp, pretty simple. So in Middle Eastern music, we're, we're, we have the capability of bending notes. So again, if this is A, So you can see the difference kind of in, in how this works. So um, this is, I've been playing this uh, really since day one. So it's been over 30 years. I love, I love the sound of it. Um, again, Armenians play it. Uh, it's still being played today. Different variety, you know, there's, there's some different nuances uh, on, the, on the instrument itself. So that gives you a little bit about, about the instrumentation. The type of music we're playing is all village music. Okay, so it's folk music. And um, all of the music, now none of us on, well actually George is, uh, Jerry and I cannot sing, and that is something you don't wanna hear. <laughs> Truly don't wanna hear, but George actually is a, uh, is a very good singer, very good um, rock, uh, what, what do you call it, what, do, what would you, like George could do it all. So George is, a, is an exceptional musician. Um, I'm just doing that because I'm not, I don't have any money to pay him tonight. <laughs> So I'm hoping, no, not true. But all of, he packs it up and he's gone. So uh, all of our music has lyrics to it. Obviously we're playing instrumental music. Um, not all of the lyrics survived. It, we'll talk about that you know, shortly. But again, this is village uh, dance music. They represent a lot of different stories. They're very simplistic stories in, in Armenian villages. It could be, talking about the weather, it could be talking about a, a pretty girl, it could be talking about a marriage or whatever, and it sounds really pretty in Armenian. Um, and then when it's translated, it's not so good. It just sounds like, you know, Mary had a little lamb. But boy, in Armenian, it sounds really good. It really does. So we're gonna play some more music for you. Oh, I need a better system here. There we go. Oh, I guess I could do that too. Let's do uh, the 9-8. Thank you. 
Gee, it's hot in here. A little warm. Um, I want to, you know, it, it, it certainly makes sense to, to give a little bit of context to and, and a little bit of history. We, I know we have some Armenians in the audience, and this is probably where you can tune out for a little bit because you, you already know what I'm about to talk about. Um, but I need to address the Armenian Genocide. So raise your hand if you have heard of the Armenian Genocide. Okay, great, good. So I don't have to go into a horrible amount of detail. But it's important to bring up for a couple of reasons because, again, I talked about that this is village music, this is folk music, this is our music. And that was, for the most part, taken away from us with an Armenian Genocide, right? 1.5 million, and by the way, it wasn't the first genocide. It, we've had a series of, of other uh, massacres and, and, and so forth throughout, throughout centuries. But by far, the one that happened over 100 years ago is probably the, the biggest that affect not only all of us on stage, but all of the Armenians that are here. We are all here, all Armenians are here because of a genocide. It's just that is how it is. We've all got individual stories of uh, grandparents, great grandparents, and, and uh, even parents that how they fled and so forth. My quick story is my grandmother on my father's side uh, escaped the genocide as, as a child with her brother, and they, they escaped and they, they fled to, to Paris. And then they eventually ended up in New York City and. The rest is kind of history. We're all still sort of here. But what's important about this and why I bring it up is because the music, as we know it, the folk music really stopped at the point of genocide, right? These, again, were folk songs. This was about everyday life. Different villages had different songs. And so you wipe out, you know, most of the Armenians, and you wipe out and, and they, you know, uh, make them leave their, their homelands, what have, they got, what have they got left? And so the music played an important part, and I, I've said this a, a million times, but it, it, it never really changes. I mean, they, these refugees escaped with whatever they could take with them, and what, is, what I marvel about is the fact that they took the music with them, right? So it's not like everybody was a classically trained musician in the old country, historic Armenia. So the fact that they came here and then brought the music with them is, is awfully important. And it's not like they had cassette players, right? Or records. Uh, this was all, it was all in their mind. So we know, you know other musicians that when they learned this music, they had, to, they had to listen to other musicians play it, and they had to remember it. They had to go home and they had to practice the heck out of it so that they could remember the song. So this is all, it's like an oral history of Armenian folk music. And the fact that it's lasted uh, and survived over 100 years is absolutely amazing. The downside of it is we don't know what we've lost, too, at the same time. So I talked earlier about we're, we're playing instrumental music and uh, it's my understanding that all of our music has got lyrics to it. Um, but again, a lot of it has been lost. So you'll notice that a lot of these songs, there's a lot of repetition to it. And along this lines, there's some improvisation and, and so forth that goes along with it. But it's because there were different verses to, to these songs. So there is a, a method to the madness, if you will. But I, I, it's always important to be able to kind of point, point that out. And then when you think about sort of coming to America at that point, the, the music still survived because th these uh, genocide survivors created new homes. They wanted desperately to create the new homes. So when they came to Detroit, why they come to Detroit? Henry Ford's $5 workday is why they came to Detroit. And so the Armenians that came here wanted to make sure that they could recreate what they lost and build a community again, 
were, Armenians are strong people, and they, like other ethnicities, you know, they wanted to make this their home, and they wanted to make sure that things would survive. And, and uh, you know, we were smart people in the old country, and we're smart people in this country. So when it pertains to music, the music came with it and lasted a lot of years. And over the last few decades, you know, I love this music. We all up here love this music, otherwise we wouldn't be playing it. This is not a full-time gig, right? We're, <laughs> we're doing this because we enjoy to play the music and, and we enjoy audiences like this and, and, and hoping that you're appreciative of it as, as well. But it's important for us to play this because it, it helps create that legacy for the music. It's not about us, it's about the music. We want it to last and continue. So. I wanted to be able to tell you all of that. How about a nice hand again for Jerry and George.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.